Hello, Ken Spriggs here with part seven of my Mandalorian meets Ahsoka Tano uh, build. And uh, lots of fantastic work on the diorama this week. Uh, pretty much completed everything and got it all ready to go for painting and putting on the uh, scenic material. So really like how it's all fitting together and starting to look really, really awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so I started working on putting down some material called uh, Hardy Super Lightweight Modeling Clay. Um, now, it's, it's not really like your typical clay. It has more of a, I don't know how to describe it. I often describe it as like a marshmallow, <laughs> as you can see. It's very soft and squishy, but it hardens in a few hours to this solid, it's still somewhat flexible. Um, it's like a rubbery foam, but it's it's on there solid. And it, um, it certainly smooths out any of these rough finishes. And what I found is if I take this, this sponge, I've been using the rough edge and pressing it down, it gives me a nice, a nice um, kind of a texture in it, which is pretty cool. And I even like molded this little rock right here, a little bit of an overhang on it. And the rock, what I did was I stuck it down into this mold. This is a rock mold for plaster. And it picked up a lot of the detail on there. I've also done that with the polymer clay, where I'll squeeze it in there, take it out, put it on a piece of foil and bake it. And that gives me a nice harder rock and more detail. I may even just do that. Um, what I also did was I, I put holes down. I used some toothpicks and put them in these holes. And then I molded foam around it. And then I stuck this figure of Mando in so his feet just match up right with the, um, the clay. So when he goes down inside, get in there. Okay, it's kind of hard to see it, but his feet are nicely molded right down into the display, which is pretty cool. So it's more realistic than... Um, than him just sitting on a flat surface and you can see underneath. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with um, Ahsoka. And she's only got the two holes plus this little hole right here. But I don't wanna block up this hole where the wiring's gonna go down either. So what I'm gonna do, I'll do a similar thing I did before, put a toothpick down into these two metal posts because I don't wanna get any of that down in there. And then I just uh, take some of this, this foam, and it's pretty flexible. It is similar to clay, but it's very light. It's not really heavy and thick like a clay would be, but you can mold it much like clay. Let me see here. I want to kind of mold it around, but I don't want to put it over that hole. And then also you, I can fill in where these gaps are and that kind of thing, as you can see. So that's kind of the main purpose of it in order to um, smooth everything out and make it look all even. I just don't want this to go down inside those aluminum tubes because then it might affect how, if it hardens in there, then I don't want that to mess up where that tube goes in. All right, so I'm just gonna kind of mold this around it. And I can add more to it afterwards as well. Get this out of the way a bit, sorry. Make sure that's in frame. Yeah, okay. So I get this at Hobby Lobby. Uh, it's, it's regularly 10.99, but when you use their 40% off coupon, it comes out to be about $6 and some. So it's not too bad. Actually, uh, Augie Gonzalez from Interstellar Modeler was the first one that introduced me to this. He was looking for um, another material that I use, which is called 
smooth finish and they didn't have it so he ended up getting this instead was telling me about it so it's pretty cool i kind of like it all right i'm not going to do too much on this i don't want to go too far up i just want to get a nice solid base and this dries in a couple of hours and it's nice so you got plenty of time to work with it uh, now you do want to seal it up i did have some before that i had in a bag like this part over here and half of it was hardened because the bag wasn't sealed very well and so you want to be careful with that you don't want to leave this out because it does air dry for sure all right i do want to get enough around where her feet are going to be because i want them to be leaving an impression so she again goes down into the base just like Mando's legs did okay there we go all right so that's gonna have to leave a pretty good gap And this can be painted. Um, and um, you can't really sand it too much. It's, it's a little too spongy. But, uh, but you, can, um, you can still cut it or drill holes in it if you needed to. All right, there we go. So now what I want to do is take this out. Take this out. It's kind of... Mold that back. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to put her down into the base using her. Hold on, I got that. There we go. Come on. There we go. And then I'm going to press her down into the foam and let me kind of move it up to her feet. Hold it up around them. So it looks like she's standing in some dirt or whatever this would be. Could be mud. Let's see. I can always add more around this and that kind of thing so it doesn't have to be the final thing. There we go. And this will not harden to her boots. It'll harden onto the base, the foam, but it won't harden on her boots. So I can just leave her on there and let it dry so it it keeps that that shape, which is what I want. All right. Now what I want to do is go back and I like I said, I'm using the blue part of the sponge. And you can just go ahead and press on this and it gives it a nice organic look, which I really like. It even kind of takes away any fingerprints that I pressed into it or any um any of the lines where a couple pieces went together so you could do this with other types of material like sandpaper you could use uh, you could even get i know they have some rollers you can get even 3d print that um that have like a wall pattern or bricks and things like that and that would be cool and just let this harden the way that it is and I don't mind if it has some unevenness to it. This is supposed to be ground anyway, so it's not a big deal. So, okay. So that's pretty much it. Make sure that I can see that. Sorry. Okay, yeah. Let's see if you can see that pattern in there. 
All right, so that's pretty cool. So like I said, this will set up in just a few hours. This I did earlier today and it's already pretty solid at this point. So I can add more to it and, um, and then basically just do the whole surface. And then that way I can paint it and, um, and then it'll be fine as far as gluing on some scenic material like some, you know, dirt or gravel or things like that, rocks, that sort of thing. So, okay. All right, so I started doing some more work on the right side of this. As you can see, covered up a lot more. Uh, I made a few little rocks here, which is really pretty easy to do. I just pick the rock on here and I just take some of this foam, press it down in there. Let me show you real quick. All right, so let's see. What if we put a rock uh, right about over in here maybe? Let's see, what do we got? Sorry. All right, so I just mold this down inside the rock. Get a little bit more. And just by pressing it in, it, it picks up the detail. When you pull it out, it kind of bends it a bit, but it's no big deal. It doesn't have to be perfect. So, okay. All right, so I got that in there. Let me just go ahead and peel that off. There we go. All right, so pretty cool. So let's see, where can I put this? Now he's standing right about here. Let's see. So he's like this. All right, so that's not in the way of him at all. And let me just lightly press it down because I don't want to mess up the detail. And what I can do is use these clay tools to go around it. Poke the edges down. Melt it into the into the foam that's already there. There we go. All right, it's pretty cool. And what I can do then is go back and use this sponge to kind of put some a little bit of that roughness back where it's meeting the, the ground. Okay. And I can even put um, other materials around it as well in order to... Um, make it look like it's blending in, like some moss and green. Uh, I'm not gonna have a lot of grass or, or things like that, but I'm gonna have a lot of debris from trees and branches and things like that. So, okay, very cool. So there we go. So I got a rock here, here, and here, and this is a big one that I made from that as well. Now, um, so Catan is pretty much set up. It always, it always sets up in a short time, that's what I'm saying, like you can't really leave it out in the air very long or it'll start to set up for you. So we can go ahead and remove her. Just be kind of gentle. There we go. Oops. Okay, there we go. And what I want to make sure to do is to open up that opening because obviously some of this went down in there and this can be cut with an exacto knife so it's not a big deal but i don't want to do too much of it because i want to i want to leave those imprints there we go so we got her nice foot imprints there let's press that back down inside all right uh, just like we have mandos 
So once that fully sets up, I'll be able to just stick her right back down there and she'll have a nice, a nice molded uh, shape. So, okay, let me keep working on this, but uh, this is working out really well. All right, so I've let this, um, allowed this to set up overnight and uh, dry. Now, um, I've used this a little bit before on my uh, Predator POD build right there on the right. Uh, and it worked pretty well. I only used it in small parts, mainly to fill in like large gaps between the foam pieces and that sort of thing. Uh, but I covered it over with uh, the smooth finish paste, which is a little wetter based kind of a material. Um, one thing I have noticed, and I noticed that a little bit on this side here, and certainly on this one, is uh, once it dried, some of it started to pull away from the foam, especially where one of the feet were, and sometimes around the edges. So I, um, I pulled this up mostly on either side, and I went ahead and put down some of the Eileen's uh, felt and foam glue, and uh, pressed it back down, and I put these toothpicks in to keep the glue from going into those holes there and this will dry overnight i did some of that over here too and that seemed to fix the issue so just kind of keep an eye out on that now i did notice that when you have a larger area like this one this seems to be down pretty good i don't think i'll have any trouble with that uh there is just a little bit get over there Like that edge right there is kind of pulling away a bit. I could just spread a little bit of glue along that edge to keep it from pulling loose. So I'll just kind of keep an eye on it. I don't want that coming loose later. Um, but this feels pretty solid, especially since it's a much bigger surface area. So I think it'll be fine once I get it over the whole thing and, um, and have it on there. But when you have a smaller piece like this, it's a little harder to do. So um, so just to kind of keep that in mind, have some other materials handy as well. One of the benefits of this I like over the, the um, smooth finished foam is that it's more solid and dries quicker and, um, and you can put a pretty good indentation into it with the sponge like I showed. And then this can be painted directly. The, um, the smooth finish is more like styrofoam and it tends to suck up the paint. So it's a it's going to be harder. It would be harder to paint those. I had to put a um, like a gloss coat over first, so I could do some some painting and weathering and that sort of thing. This seems to work well, especially in the case where I'm just going to spray this with the flat black, which is more of a satin black, to get some black basing and go from there. So okay. <laughs> All right, so as you saw from the previous fills and the time lapse, I um, created a really crooked, twisted tree. Uh, it's similar to one I saw in a still on the, um, on the episode. There's a lot of those there. Uh, it's a really burnt out, destroyed forest. So um, as I did before on the other trees, I used some foil and just twisted it and got the right shape that I wanted. And um, and then I put the polymer clay onto it. Uh, now I'm gonna bake it on its side like this so I keep the right crooked thing so this part doesn't like droop down, which is what would happen if I tried standing it up. And I don't care if the back has some smooth marks on it because it's gonna be behind it. So the way this is gonna go, it's gonna be hard to see it from the top view, but it's gonna go right up around here and it's just gonna be secured down and then it's gonna hang over and it's gonna come over the edge of the um, of this side of the diorama a little bit, which is fine. Gives it that 3D look uh, and it's gonna look pretty cool. 
and I just wanted to make sure that's why I showed in the previous stills I put Ahsoka on here because I don't want her to be in the way of this so that's why that's going to be coming off this way so she can come up right here so it's going to be behind her and you're still going to see the moon there behind her it's not going to be obscured either by it so all right so what I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and use these clay tools in order to just add some different uh, texture on it. And I won't show you the whole thing, but I'll kind of give you an idea of how that's gonna work. So all I'm really gonna do, and I have a bunch of little marks and things that are already there. So all I wanna do is just sort of go through and, and give it some some lines and make them kind of crooked so it looks like it's it's real bark that you're seeing here. And there's no, there's no definite pattern that it has to have. It just has to be kind of random. And in a few places, I'm going to like indent some knots, some big knots coming out of it like this right here. Just put some, some different marks because once I paint this and I get some uh, some black underneath it and then put some other colors on top, I want it to look like it's it's definitely been scorched and burnt and really kind of chewed up. An old rotten tree. But I still definitely still want to see a bit of the bark pattern there in the background of it so it doesn't look like it's it's a smooth tree which it isn't and I'm going to be adding other scenic materials like some moss and some things like that onto it so that's really going to help to bring it out Definitely want to put some some different material or some different texture and patterns into it so it looks like a real tree. And then I'll be ready to go ahead and bake it. So, okay. So I will go ahead and work on that. And then I will get it baked. And I kind of have this already set so it's going to mold onto that. But just like the other trees, I'm going to use some, some uh, epoxy sculpt to attach this really solidly onto the base when I'm ready to do so. And this should be hardened enough that this will maintain its shape and it won't really droop, so. All right. All right, and here is the finished tree. It's baked for about 30 minutes. It's nice and solid. I think it turned out really, really cool. So this is gonna be positioned pretty much right about here. It's gonna be sticking over. And it's nice and sturdy. All right, so let me go ahead and put the backing on this and we'll take a look and see how that's gonna look with the rest of the, um, with the backdrop on there. All right, so the tree is going to be placed right about here, give or take. So it's going to hang out a little bit over the center part where the two dioramas meet. So that'll be cool. It'll it'll uh, be extending off of the um, the display a bit, but uh, it'll be really cool with that background. It won't block the moon any but it'll look pretty cool. All right, let me turn off the light and show you how it looks with the moon as well. All right, there we go. And again, the moon does not show up how it really does in real life. It looks like that. It's really cool. But the camera tends to wash it out somewhat. All right, so that's gonna look really cool. Let me go ahead and um, put a Soka on the base and show you how she's gonna look in relation to it. All right, and just kind of positioning the tree there behind her and showing how that's gonna look. So it's not gonna block the moon or anything.
but it's going to be pretty cold and it's going to hang out over the the diorama the left side of the diorama over onto the right side of the diorama so and obviously it'll be even cooler once i get it all painted and it'll kind of mask the scraggly trees in the background so all right so definitely looking pretty fantastic so maybe one or two more uh tree kind of things i think a, a fallen hollowed out trunk which um which i've seen in some pictures as well and then um and that'll be done with the main structure of the trees and those sorts of things so okay All right, so one more major part uh, out of polymer clay that I made for my um, diorama and a few little pieces um, is uh, this hollowed out tree trunk, which I kind of glimpsed in one of the scenes. This whole forest is just really rotted and destroyed and just ruined. They must have just leveled it or blown it up or burned it or whatever. But um, I'm going to focus mainly on just the larger pieces on the front here like the two big trees, this twisted tree, a trunk, which I'm gonna put right back in here. And I, I used my um, my foam wire cutter to cut that out. So this is gonna go right about here, give or take. Just kind of sticking down into it. It looks pretty good with the rest of it. And, um, and what I did was I just took a toilet paper roll, which is now kind of cut up and chewed up. And I, um, I wrapped the, put the clay around it, and this clay is really good to work with. You know, when you when you knead it a little bit and soften it up, it works really well, and it molds over things pretty simply. So I just, you know, pressed it out pretty thinly, wrapped it around different places, left it rough on the edges, uh, and then I kind of curled those and opened them up and flattened it out on the bottom, and uh, it made a rotten tree stump. So I can dirty that up and put a lot of a lot of. Um, Scenic material, I have like some some twines and, and twigs and other things that'll kind of fill it up and make it look all all kind of nasty, so that'll be cool. And then I just pulled this out whenever it was done. I cut it and just pulled it out. And it didn't stick to the clay, so that was good. All right, so that'll be pretty cool. Like I said, I'm gonna figure out where to position it up here. And um, I also made these two rocks. Now these I did with the same rock mold, but I used a polymer clay. So I like that a lot better. It gets a lot more detail than the other stuff does over here. So I may just cut these off and redo these again with the polymer clay. It's just as easy to do. It's the same basic idea. You just press it down in and you um, pull it out, throw it on some foil and bake it in the oven. And it turns out really nice. So a couple more rocks over on this side. Just kind of put them in random places. So, okay. But that's looking pretty good. Um, not sure if I need any more of these big structures with the clay. These should probably be okay, other than maybe redoing these rocks right here and get a little sharper detail out of them. I might just do that because I think those will look better. And I could just easily cut these off because they're just like a soft foam so all right all right and um here are these elements with the backdrop i always try to put these on when i add new things just to kind of get an idea of how it's all going to look together everything pieced together and i may even put like the figures up there too just to kind of get an idea of where they're going to be standing as well um, but i think that's looking pretty cool i like that hollowed out uh, tree right there and of course, you know, I'll, I'll fill in around it with this, with this um, lightweight clay and smooth it around it so it's not just sticking on this bare foam like that. Um, but I think that's pretty much it as far as what I'm going to do for any of the major um, type of work. 
I was thinking of doing some thin spindly trees towards the back, but I want to kind of get an idea that that's like the background in the distance on the backdrop, and this is the foreground. So the foreground, we're going to see larger versions of the trees and the stumps and rocks and things like that. So I don't think it would look right if I put some thin trees in the back. It just wouldn't look the right scale with the rest of these. So I think I'm going to leave it at that. Um, so then what I can do is um, I can get these glued in place. And I don't know if I showed it before, but I, um, I used five minute epoxy to glue three brass tubes in the bottom of this to give it some nice strong support. And I just have some holes down in the foam. But what I'll end up doing, come on, get in there, is, um, is gluing that down with five minute epoxy. So it'll be nice and firm down into it. Not one of those, those tubes that give me a lot more uh, strength on it. So, okay. And um, this I'll just glue down as well and do the same thing. All right, so I wanted the tree to look a little more like a rotted out part of it. So that the part that you're gonna see sticking down, I molded some more of this polymer clay inside of it. And I just really chewed it up with these uh, silicone tools. So it looks like chewed up wood. And I can even paint that like a lighter brown. So it looks like it's the inside of the log that's kind of rotted and weathered. So, and then the rest of it will stay the same. I don't need to do the other part from the back because you're not really going to see it. This is the part that's going to be hanging down right about here. So that's going to give it a, a, a more accurate appearance. And all I have to do now that this is hardened is just throw it back in the oven again for another 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And it'll just harden that inside of this. And this should keep its same shape. So, okay. All right. So I'm getting ready to glue down the... Um, the twisted tree with some five minute epoxy. And what I did was I took uh, this tool here and I went through and I put a bunch of holes. I did it over the whole surface to give, uh, well, first of all, the five minute epoxy a good, a good grip to go down into the foam, but also this, um, this foam here. So uh, this is gonna go right into here, these three little holes. I can't tell amongst the other holes, but I'm gonna go ahead and liberally put some on and also these brass posts and go ahead and glue that down. So, okay. All right, and there's the stump that I added more material on the inside to. Now, while it was still warm out of the oven, I um, I held it down onto the styrofoam, and I kind of put a bit of a curve into it, just a little bit, so it molded down right where I want it to set. So it'll it'll fit there nice and snugly. And then there's the um, there's the new chewed up front of it. So, okay. I think it looks a whole lot better now. So as I showed from the previous stills, I um, put down some of the foam lightweight clay around where this log is going to go because I'm going to glue it down. And I did glue it down. So I left some underneath of it so that it would have a nice solid adhesion to the foam with the holes in it that I made. But I, I formed the foam around uh, the rest of it. So, cause it would be a little harder to try to get the foam underneath of the log once it's glued down in place. So I did use five minute epoxy and glued it down last night and it hardened overnight. So now you can see that the foam is, is all around where I need it to be, including the back and all the sides. So now I can just continue on ar around the rest of the foam and add on to the, the dried lightweight clay that's already there but I have the, um, the log nice and secured onto the, um, onto the foam and it's on there nice and solid. I can literally lift the whole thing up using this. Uh, I also glued down the tree and that's dried as well and that's nice and solid also. And once it hardened, I poured a little bit more in to fill some more gaps, but this isn't going anywhere. It's nice and solid. Uh, I also glued down uh, the rocks and I did go back 
and redo the rocks on the right side using the polymer clay so I get a sharper look to that detail which I like and I um, I used five minute epoxy to glue those down I also made two over here well I had these two over here and I glued those down as well so I think that's all the elements I need right now uh, once that fully sets up with everything I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the foam paste around and I can mold the foam paste or the foam not paste the foam lightweight foam clay around the rocks to blend them in a little bit more around these and that kind of thing and then I want to finish covering the entire foam surface with the foam clay and I keep calling it foam clay because it is sort of like a foam once it once it hardens with the lightweight clay and then once I get that all done and let that set up fully I am ready to go ahead and start doing some painting on it and I'm still thinking of doing a a black coat just to make everything dark underneath and then kind of going from there but for now um, we'll go ahead and we'll get the rest of the foam and then everything will be all done and put on and everything else that I'm going to add is going to be painting and or some type of scenic material like some green moss and and twigs and things like that so okay <laughs> All right, so I've completed putting the um, the lightweight clay onto the entire surface on both sides. And of course, they still come apart nicely. I did not put clay down in the part where they meet because I was afraid it would mess up the connection and where they're going to meet. So I want that to stay the same. I just took it down to where it met. Uh, and then I did over the entire surface and around the trees and the rocks and everything else. Uh, I also connected the two trees on the back and you can see that the one there on the left is sticking way up. Uh, I do have an aluminum rod. You can barely see it right there in the middle going down into it. And then I five minute epoxy it in this one as well. Uh, the key was that I had to have these match up as far as their contour so that they're going to mask that, um, that line in the back for the, um, for the display. Uh, so let me show you the back of that as well and how those are connected. All right, and so here is the back. And um, as you can see, the, the tree here is, is higher up. It didn't fit quite down into there. The main reason for that is that I needed these two fit together the way I molded them. So when I molded these tree stumps down here with the, with the roots, I just kind of guesstimated and obviously it was a little bit off on this one. But it's fine. Uh, what I'm going to do now, um, I put five minute epoxy in. And as you could see before in the stills, I have some aluminum tubing going down into it that I put in there really well to support them. So they're fairly solid. And I just have them taped together at the top to hold them in place while they were hardening. Because these will come apart. These will not be connected. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use epoxy sculpt. Super white parts and I'm going to mix it together and I'm going to mold it around where these joints are and definitely build this out a little bit around here and around this part here so it looks more like a natural connection and it's white as well and then I can just smooth it on and use the clay tools to, to put some marks on it just like the trees have so when I'm done with it this will harden on its own and then they'll look correct and be in the right position so Okay.
All right, so I got the um, the epoxy scope onto the bottom of the trees, and you can see I extended the one there on the left out to cover up more of that seam going up through the middle. So those trees are doing a good job of covering that. You can't really see it. And there will be some other material in between it as well, as far as, um, you know, like some, some vines and scraggly bits that I have in some of my... Um, scenic material so um so that looks really cool i will let those harden overnight and both of those trees will then be attached permanently onto the base and they're still separatable so i can separate the both halves i just wanted to put the backdrop on there in order to um in order to get that let me turn off the tv there in the background there we go. okay and just like some of the other bits, these are sticking up a little bit above it, and that's fine. It kind of gives it that 3D kind of reality. And with um, Mando, his cape's going to be sticking out a little bit beyond the base. This tree is going to stick out from this base over onto that one a little bit, so it's going to be pretty cool. All right, but there is all of the structures put on as far as all of the, the textured material with the lightweight clay. Uh, the trees, the logs, the rocks, the trees in the back, and everything else. So that is all complete. Uh, the next step will be to go ahead and start to paint this. And I'm still thinking about some colors that I want to use for this. And then add on the scenic material as well in order to, um, to finish off this base. So uh, definitely coming along fantastically. Really happy with how everything looks as far as the twisted tree and the big rotted out log and that sort of thing so okay so let me show you one extra little um little thing that i'm going to be adding on here that i just uh decided on in the last uh, last week and um and let me show you that it is a surprise character <laughs> Right, and so uh, as you saw from the previous stills, uh, there's a um, there's a character called the daughter in the um, in the animated series, I believe the Clone Wars, that um, I believe her spirit went into what's called a convor, or it's like an owl. There it is, right there, perched on the tree. And um, the name of the the owl is Morai, M O R A I. And uh, has befriended Ahsoka Tano, and um, I guess in some point saved her life. At, at some point, she owes her life to her. So um, there's a little scene. Well, it's a little, it's a little um, kind of an Easter egg in the episode where we see an owl on a branch going by. We believe it is, and it, I believe it is. It's a little callback to the animated series, and um, and so I went on to Thingiverse. And they had a foul for Mirai. And there she is. I just have her sitting on there. I bought a little part on the back of the tree out of epoxy sculpt. And I put a little aluminum tube into the owl so she can fit onto the branch. I'm not going to glue her on yet because I have to paint the tree, obviously, and paint her. But there she is. Pretty cool. So I thought it would be a nice little nod to it as well. And just have her sitting on the branch and you'll probably notice from the scene too that this twisted tree i tried to mold very similarly to the um to the one in that scene as well she's not sitting on this tree but it's shown in that shot but i really liked how that looked and it just kind of really added to the gnarled uh, forest that this is in so okay so uh Mirai is going to join our character so we'll have Mirai perched on the branch behind ahsoka tano We'll have the child sitting back on a rock here behind the Mandalorian. And, um, and I have everything all completed. I built up those trees in the back, which are nice. So uh, I put the moon on right now so you can get a little, little shot of how that looks. That's how the moon looks. That's better. Okay. <laughs> all right. So um, a lot of great progress. Very happy with how this is all looking as far as my uh, my two-part diorama. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this week. Uh, definitely happy with how my diorama is turning out. 
and um, I will continue working on this and starting to get it painted and putting on uh, some material to uh, to make it look like the burnout forest that it is. Uh, and then that just leaves uh, getting uh, Mando painted and the little child figure. And then we will get this all wrapped up and, um, and take a look at my beautiful diorama. So thank you to all my new subscribers. Uh, just about reaching 1,600 subscribers. I might have already hit that by the time this goes up. So thank, to, thank you to all of you. I really um, enjoy being able to share my um, builds with you. And, um, and people leave comments a lot saying how much they've learned and it helps them to, to do the same kind of things with their models. And, and I'm always glad to hear that. I love when people take my techniques and, and use them. I do the same thing. A lot of the techniques I've used have come from other sources like the, um, the lightsabers for Ahsoka Tana came from uh, Boyle Harvey Time. Uh, my backdrop from Mark Fraley. Suggestions and ideas from uh, Augie Gonzalez from Interstellar Modeler. Uh, and also other sites that I've looked at as well. So um, really happy that, um, that I can share my hobby with other people. And I hope you likewise uh, will also take these ideas and use them for yourself. All right, well, thank you very much. And I will see you next time.